moving on to part three of uh, our chapter so now we're looking at the ways in which uh, digital devices communicate with each other so digital devices can communicate using something which we call a satellite i'll be explaining to you later on what a satellite is so when communication takes place using a satellite it will be using something which we call radio waves radio waves will be used to transmit the messages so where do we use satellite? It is used for GPS, which is basically global positioning system, okay, for television, for telephone, for military purposes. Then when it comes to broadcasting, okay, we'll be using radio waves, like for television shows and radio shows. Then when it comes to a wired connection, we use electrical signals. So it is used in networking and it is used to connect peripheral devices. When you say peripheral, we're talking about input, output, and storage devices. Uh, when it comes to wireless methods, we are using radio waves, again, for networking or for connecting peripheral devices. So, now I'm talking about satellite communication. Okay, so I'm sure all of you all know what a satellite is and you all do know that it uh, orbits outside. It, it orbits in space. Okay, so it is something like this. Okay, and you can see solar panels are fixed onto it, which means that this particular satellite is running 24 7 okay since it's getting its energy from the sun it's available all the time okay so let's see what it does satellites transmit data to and receive data from digital devices digital devices use antenna to receive the radio signals that satellite transmitted so back on earth we have so many digital devices which are actually communicating with this satellite using what we call an antenna okay so a long thin piece of metal you would see fixed on things like radios on televisions okay that is what you call an antenna that antenna is what communicates with this satellite the benefit of satellite communication is that the number of satellites means that the system is always available it also cannot be affected by power shortages so there is just not one satellite in space there are many satellites so even if one stops functioning the others will continue to function okay and Another thing is, it is not affected by power shortages. I told you it has solar panels fixed onto it, so it is up and running all the time. The problem with satellite signals is that they do not pass through solid objects. So signals can also be affected by atmospheric weather conditions, such as heavy rain or snow. Okay, so for example, if you are using a television during a heavy rain time or when it is snowing heavy, you will notice that there will be a big drop in your television's reception. Okay, you will notice the channel is not very clear. If some of you are using cable TV, the channel will completely stop working. Okay, because when there are physical obstacles going across it, it will, it will be difficult for the satellite to communicate with your antenna. Okay, also another example is, for example, when you go to mountainous areas, or for example, when you go inside a tunnel, you would notice your mobile phone doesn't have any signal. That is because the satellite is unable to send its signals through the tunnel or it is for example unable to communicate with your mobile phone when you are in a mountainous area because that mountain is blocking many signals from reaching your device okay so for example another example is when you go into the lift when you go into the lift your mobile phone signal is almost zero it is because the satellite signals cannot pass through very solid i mean a very thick object let's say for example the lift it cannot go through okay so that's how the satellite works. This is the benefit and this is the drawback of it. Uh, next, we come on to something known as global positioning system or GPS. And it is something which all of us are using on a daily basis. Okay, all of you would have used Google Maps. All of you would have used uh, what we call taxi services such as PickMe, Uber. Okay, so all these apps use what we call global positioning system in order to identify your location and also in order to identify where you are going to be dropped off at okay so satellite communications are used for gps so for gps to work it has to communicate with satellites navigation aids make use of gps signals to calculate the exact location of a device gps signals are sent from a network of 24 satellites orbiting the earth okay a view of only four satellites is required to calculate an accurate location so calculating a, a, a location around 24 satellites work but only a view of four satellites is required to get your exact location okay so when you open google maps for example you would find for example it starts 
from the world and then it zooms into your country, then it zooms into your city and then it zooms into your area, then into your lane and then into your exact location because these four satellites are now working to get your exact location. Uh, moving on then to television, so I'm sure all of you would have seen these kind of antennas, okay, we call these dish antennas. Okay, so what happens over here, digital video broadcasting is the internationally accepted standard method of broadcasting digital television. So when it comes to transmitting, uh, when it comes to broadcasting television signals, we use something which we call digital video broadcasting. Okay, a video signal from the broadcaster is uh, transmitted using a large antenna on earth to one or more satellites, which then broadcast the signal back down to earth so tv stations would have an antenna something like this okay so what does this antenna do it transmits the signals to the satellites okay so i think we have a diagram somewhere over here okay so i'm sure you would have seen uh, what happens is this kind of a powerful antenna it collects the signals and sends it to the satellite which is orbiting the earth okay then once these signals go on to the uh, what do you call the satellite from the satellite they are sent back into earth to whichever tv is looking for those signals okay so a satellite television viewer will have an antenna installed and this receives a signal and sends it to a set-top box the set-top box decodes the signal and converts it so that it is ready to be sent to a television okay so if you could just focus over here this antenna sends the signals to the satellite which is somewhere outside earth okay orbiting in uh, orbiting outside earth okay so these signals come over the satellite and then the satellite will send those signals to whichever antenna is looking for those signals so for example let's say this is channel number one signals from channel number one are sent to the satellite and then from the satellite sent back onto earth to whichever tv antenna is looking for channel one signals now once those signals come over here uh, your television cannot directly understand them. Okay, so that is why it has to go through something which we call a set top box. Okay, signals come over here, then from here it goes to this which we call a set top box. This set top box will convert the signals so that your television will be able to understand it and display the content to you. Okay, then moving on from here. Satellite communication is also used to allow people in remote areas to place voice calls using satellite telephones. Nowadays what we do is we use a SIM card in our mobile phones to communicate with each other. But if you go to remote areas where uh, you don't have what you call a mobile phone network, what you can do is you can use a device like this which has an antenna and whatever you see on this device okay, will be transmitted to the satellite from this antenna so it goes to the satellite and then from the satellite you go to whichever telephone it is supposed to be going to okay so satellite telephones use antenna and transmit data to and receive data from one or more satellites satellite phones are mostly used in remote areas in areas where there is no proper mobile phone network okay so obviously since it is traveling long distance okay you would always notice for example if you take the policeman's walkie-talkie they use satellite communication you can see the quality is extremely poor because the signals have to go from this device all the way to the satellite which is in space okay on the way there are, there are so many obstacles okay so the, the quality of the signal keeps reducing and then from the satellite when it comes back to your phone the reply comes back to your phone those signals from the satellite has to go through so many obstacles to come back to your phone Okay, so then what happens? There are so many disruptions, so many blockages, so many interference. So you would notice that the quality of the voice would be very, very poor. Uh, then we also have analog television and radio. Okay, so look what happens over here. Transmitters broadcast television and radio signals that are received by a viewer's antenna. This antenna sends a signal through a wire to the television or radio receiver, which converts it into images and audio. Okay. So what happens over here is you might have an antenna like this fixed on the roof of your house, okay? So what is this antenna doing? It is communicating with a broad, broadcast station transmitter, okay? The reason we keep this antenna right at the top of our houses, at the top of our building, so that it would have no obstacles or no interferences, okay? So we keep it at a point where it's very clear, so it can directly communicate with these kind of broadcast station transmitter, okay? So signals come from here all the way here. And then from here it will come to your television or it will come to your radio. 
Now, this antenna is used generally for local channels. But if you are having a TV which has access to international channels, you will be having an antenna something like this. Okay. So, I hope you have understood how this works. Okay. The satellite sends signals to this transmitter. From this transmitter, it comes all the way to your antenna and then from your antenna to the television or to the radio. So, uh, if you have, I hope you have understood. If you have not, please you can drop a comment in the, uh, you can drop a comment below. Okay. Or else you can even privately message me. In the meantime, if you could uh, answer question numbers uh, 11 all the way to question number 16. Okay. If you could answer these. The answer to this particular question, question number 16, is there in your textbook. Okay. The difference between DVB and DVB S2X. Okay. Please do check your textbook and under chapter number 4, the answer for this question is available. If you are unable to find the answer, do not worry, drop me a personal message and I will be very happy to explain it to you. In our next video, we will be continuing from wired communication.